Hi guys, Tabby, hope you're all keeping well. Yes, an impromptu video today. I wasn't planning on putting one together, but I've been following the automotive press recently, and if you have as well, you may well have seen that there's been rumors circulating about the Taycan, specifically a model which is going to sit above the Taycan Turbo S, which of course is what we're in now. Now, I'm very, very excited about this, uh, but I want to answer the question, can a Porsche Taycan ever really be a GT car? We know the Porsche GT range is incredibly sought after. GT4, GT3, GT2, GT2 RS, if you're really lucky. One of my favorite cars on the road today. Or of course, the bonkers 90s GT1, if you're super lucky and get your hands on a Straza version or something along those lines. But can a Taycan ever be a GT car? I, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because a GT car to me is swift and nimble and light. And a, a Taycan, you would probably say, isn't exactly those things. It's quite a heavy beast as we know. Now, it is brutally quick, the Taycan Turbo S. And people often say, is a Taycan Turbo S too fast for the road? I don't think it is. Yes, it's got the crazy launch mode, which is sort of two and a half seconds of overboost, 750 brake horsepower. But I find if you want to pass or give a quick squirt when you're actually already moving along and overboost isn't available and you've only got 616 brake horsepower, it is a little bit lacking compared to some of the other crazy ice cars out there on the road. And I think something which sat above the Turbo S in terms of its performance and capability would be brilliant. And in fact, I'm on my way to Porsche Guildford now to see if I can potentially squeeze some kind of deposit down on whatever it might be. Who knows? So what is the rumor mill saying? Well, they're kind of quoting a thousand brake horsepower. And the reason for that is obviously the Tesla Plaid, right? The Model S Plaid, which is crazy and held the Nürburgring title for an EV for a while until Porsche took it back with a, a version of the Taycan, which is only available in Germany. And as we know, to do this, to get that Nürburgring time, it has to be an official production car. And I think this version had an uprated tire, slightly different handling capability, but it is available in Germany to buy should you want to. I'm not sure how many have been sold, but they took the, the, the crown back by two seconds. They beat the plaid by about two seconds. I think it was a seven minute 33 time around the ring. And they obviously want to smash this completely. And that's why they're looking at this 1,000 brake, a thousand brake variant of the Taycan, if I can get my words out properly, which will be crazy. But there's some problems here. We have to discuss the elephant in the room. The Taycan already has a pretty poor range when compared with other EVs. There is no escaping that especially the likes of Tesla, even though they might over-egg their, their range capability. But the problem is that the current dual motor setup you get in the Taycan Turbo S is, I'm told or advised, that the, the amount of power they get out of it currently is pretty much the limit, which is why you only get that two and a half seconds overboost before everything gets too hot. I think it probably blows up. But the, we're at the limit here, right? So what do you do to get more power? Well, you potentially put in a third motor like we've got in the Plaid. And what is that gonna do for the range? The battery pack in the Taycan, 93 kilowatt hours, is that third motor really gonna dent the range even more? Now I know Porsche have been looking at solid state batteries. So could they have some kind of trick up their sleeve in terms of their ability to power that new Taycan, whatever it is, whatever they wanna call it. And I think they're gonna to have to do something pretty special in order to ensure that it has a meaningful range and also the performance to boot. But I think a Taycan with that additional HP, that additional BHP on tap would be absolutely phenomenal. It would help the car, the heavy car that it is, feel even lighter because yes, the Turbo S that I'm in now is an absolutely phenomenal car and I do love it for what it is. For me, it could do with just a little bit more forward capability when the time demands and you need to do some uh, exciting passing. You just want to put your foot down and have a little bit of a stomp. But yeah, it is absolutely brilliant. But for me, a Taycan with more power, a thousand brake horsepower, provided it was available all the time and you know you didn't have this overboost thing, would be absolutely brilliant. So that is why I'm gonna go and try and speak to these guys now and just see if I can get any information out of them. I, I'm pretty sure the response is gonna be, yeah, we don't know anything yet, mate. See you later. Uh, they might even take my money and say, we'll give you a call when we know more. But interesting to hear this. Now, the next bit of rumor mill that is, and by the way, you can just do a search. So some of the big magazines, I won't mention any names now, but 
do a search on the big magazines, the big automotive magazines out there, and you'll see this car doing laps of the Nürburgring with a spoiler on the back. You know, nobody really knows what it is. It's all speculation at the moment, but they're obviously up to something because I think compared to the other EVs you can get out there at the moment, like for example, the, um, the Lucid Air Sapphire with 1200 BHP, um, you, you've got to really think, is, is there more that they'd like to do with the Taycan? And, and yes, absolutely, I think they would and should. Why not? Let's throw more power at it. Not that it needs more power, but the other bit of rumor mill doing the round is of course the facelift version of the Taycan. And we're about getting about midway through the model race. So for 23, 24, we'd like to see a facelift. Absolutely. So some of the speculation that has been out there is definitely starting to churn a little bit. And there have been photos that have surfaced of what we suspect is the facelift Taycan doing the rounds. And yes, the biggest change to the Taycan is the front end. The front end of the Taycan, they've changed the lights. If indeed that is the lights we'll see in production, but they've changed those lights to be slightly more streamlined and aggressive. Now, I have to admit, when I first saw the Taycan, I loved the shape of it, but I thought the weakest area was the front end and those lights for me. And I really do think they've changed the game a little bit here in terms of how the new front end looks with those lights. It is looking very, very interesting indeed, more sleek, but they have to be careful here because the sleeker and more diluted you make a front end, the more risk you run of making it become something very generic, genericizing that car, right? So could it, it could be looking at anything. If, it, if it's too smooth, too streamlined, you might as well be looking at a Model 3 or whatever, right? But the they're trying to, I think, make it a little bit more aggressive, make it a little bit more streamlined. So we don't know what the end result is going to be, but we can certainly expect something. And I'm quite excited to see what it is. Now, we'll have to wait some time until we start to see official leaks of this drop. So all we've got to go on now are those spy shots that you've seen out and about in the press and just search on Google and the first hits that come back will provide you with the links. I can't really share the the, the, uh, the photos now, even through fair use, copyright, etc., whatever. But the that is going to be a very, very interesting thing to focus on. So quite exciting news for the Taycan. And for me, this just shows how invested Porsche are in the EV side of things. We know we're going to see an EV Macan dropping soon. Macan, however you pronounce it. Uh, the Panamera, obviously, and of course, the ever exciting replacement for the Cayman stroke Boxster, which is also going to be a full ice using that new battery pack, which apparently sits kind of up and in the rear seat. So you get it kind of replicating the weight of the engine. So there is lots coming in the Porsche EV space. Absolutely no escaping that. And I'm very, very excited to see what they do. They're certainly pushing the boundaries here. And they're certainly innovating faster than, than I think I've seen anyone else innovate. Tesla, if you look at Tesla, have we really seen a lot of innovation from them recently? I don't think we have. I really don't. Considering the length of time they've been around, there's the Cybertruck delay. Their, their new uh, articulated lorry, their, their big juggernaut thing which is coming along, is you've seen it out and about, but it's going to be a long time coming as well, I think. And they're quoting 500 miles of range for that, which for a semi is, is nothing, right? And what's it going to look like for charging the thing up? Cybertruck delayed. Then, of course, the Roadster, which everyone's very excited about, and I think does look brilliant. That is delayed as well. And I think the, the speed of innovation we're seeing from Porsche in the EV department, for me, is very, very exciting indeed. And I think we can expect some great things coming out of the, the Porsche stable from an EV perspective in the future. So I just wanted to discuss that on, on this one. And I really would appreciate it if you commented on the discussion point here, because it's genuinely very interesting to hear what your thoughts in terms of what it might be. Uh, can a Porsche Taycan ever be a GT car? Can it ever? Is it ever worthy of wearing that badge, that GT badge? That, that for me, is, is a really big question. And, you know, I think once we get a chance to drive the thing, only then will people be able to say, have they been able to make a, a 2.3 tonne car feel as nimble as a, a GT3 RS or a GT3 or a GT2? 
Who knows? That is the big question. So uh, fingers crossed that you pull something out of the bag here, but really appreciate you watching this one. Quick discussion. Do take care. Uh, do sub if you haven't already. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.